Hey, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville, and this is my take on the quarter one results issued by the Federation of Rology for Swiss watch exports, as I say, in quarter one 2021. A few things to bear in mind here. This is purely Swiss watch exports. Doesn't account for anything happening in China or in uh, Japan. And I think that is something we occasionally lose sight of. You know, we look at the collapse of sales from Switzerland in low, low cost watches and we think, oh, the whole segment's collapsing. I understand that the sale of G-Shocks, for example, is exploding and never been better. So I think we need to be cautious about sort of extrapolating what we see in Switzerland to the rest of the world. But on the other hand, Swiss watches are a huge part of our lives and that's what I'm going to talk about now. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's get into some analysis of the quarter one exports for the Swiss watch industry in 2021. This is taken from the FH figures. Some things to note uh, to understand what's going to come next is all of the prices we talk here on the graphs are all in terms of export or wholesale prices, no tax, no margin, etc. To get the actual retail price and have that sort of fixed in your mind, I generally multiply by a little bit more than two. So for example, 3,000 Swiss francs becomes 7,000 Swiss francs. The other thing you'll notice is it can be difficult always saying francs. I will take occasionally drop into dollars, obviously talking about US dollars. The Swiss franc and the US dollar are broadly comparable. So Forgive me with that. It's uh, it's too tricky for me to constantly come back and correct myself. If I do slip into dollars, I think it's close enough and you, hopefully you can forgive me for that. Okay, so with all of that said, what the other thing I can say is we continue to live in interesting times. We are nowhere near the 2019 sort of baseline of normal where we're kind of comparable at the moment in quarter one 21 where we're coming out of covid with quarter one 2020 when we're coming into COVID. Given that turbulence, it can be tricky trying to understand what the world's going to look like in a year's time or two years' time. But I think there is still some value in doing what analysis we can. And the first part of analysis that we can see is quarter one of 2021 is looking better than the previous quarters. It's doing okay. There is a real bend in the curve and I can I suspect there'll be a lot of very relieved CEOs and other executives in Switzerland seeing the shape of that. Digging into it in a bit more detail, let's look at it through the lens of materials. What we can see is solid growth in the numbers of watches sold across all the metallics, um, mostly in steel and other metals. So that'd be things like bronze and titanium. But a real fall off in a continuing fall off in the sale of watches of other materials. So that would be anything from plastics through to composites and high end ceramics. What's actually more interesting, though, is when you go across and you look at the change in the value of those, you see a couple of interesting things. For me, I see that the value of two-tone watches compared to the increase in the numbers sold has gone down or has been is is quite low sorry i shouldn't say it's fallen that would indicate to me that the the swiss industry is now selling more but slightly cheaper two-tone watches the other thing which is particularly interesting is that despite having a nearly 14% drop in the number of watches made of other materials, there's a 27% increase in the value of those watches. So that really entails me that the sale of cheap and cheerful plastic swatches, etc., is in free fall. But the value but the, the sale of high-end composites and ceramics seems to be doing okay. And that's kind of supported when you go across and you have a look at what's happening with the sales of wristwatches by price category. Now, those watches above 3,000 Swiss francs, 
which is going to be a retail price of, say, 7,000 francs or dollars, they've been doing okay and they're continuing to do okay. Good, solid numbers and value increases. But what's really striking here is a really aggressive comeback in, we'll call it the mid-price range. Watches with a a value of between, say, 500 Swiss francs to around about 7,000 Swiss francs have really come back hard, very large increases in their sales. And I think that probably indicates that those are watches that rely very heavily on stores being open, casual watch buyers being able to walk in and simply buy a watch. And I think that really indicates what's going on with increased um, opening up as we come out of the COVID times. Okay, so now let's look at quarter one, 2021, through the lens of regions and what's happening out there in the regions. The first thing you can see is that China is continuing to explode, bursting past even 2019 records. Now, part of this is clearly going to be a result of the ongoing collapse of sales into Hong Kong and effectively the repatriation of some of those exports from Hong Kong back to the mainland. However, if you do look at um, some of the sales and exports into places like Singapore and Australia, um, I believe it's likely that not all of the Hong Kong sales have come, collapse has been redirected to the mainland and that there has as well been real growth in the Chinese market. Ballpark, I'm guessing that's in the region for quarter one, of around about uh, 200 million Swiss francs. So that is, in quarter one, 2021, there was about 200 million dollars, 200 million francs of actual real growth in demand um, compared to quarter one, 2019. Now, remember that growth that we're talking about is at wholesale value, it's export value, it's not retail value. So that's going to mean that the actual retail value of watches sold to China in quarter one of 2021 is approximately 500 million Swiss francs or dollars more than it was in quarter one 2019. Now, what's actually really interesting is think about those Morgan and Stanley numbers that tell us about one in every four dollars spent on a Swiss watch goes to Rolex. So what that means is between quarter one of 2019 and quarter one of 2021, there is likely to have been an increase in demand for Rolex watches in China of approximately 125 million uh, Swiss francs. Now, annualize that, because remember, that's a quarterly number. That's an annual growth increase of, say, 500 Swiss francs, 500 million Swiss francs in growth between 2019 and 2021. So if anyone's wondering where all your Rolexes went, I think this shows you. That is approximately, at an average price of around about 10,000 Swiss francs for a Rolex, that is 50,000 Rolexes growth in two years in one country. That is the entire year's production, more than entire year's production of Submariners. That is probably four years production of Daytonas. So if you, as as I said, if you're kind of wondering why the, the Rolex supply seems to be drying up, Just look at what's happening in China more than anything else. Moving down, we can see that the US is continuing to do quite well, largely reflecting the fact that they never quite went into lockdown the way every other country did. And even then, they're coming back out of that very aggressively. They they were the first to start getting rid of masks, first to start opening up retail outlets. The The Swiss industry has clearly noticed that and has been redirecting exports to the United States in the, in, with the idea that they'll get earlier sales faster there. The EU, on the other hand, again, its sales continue to reflect a more 
uh, a, a, a harsher response to COVID. They've stayed in lockdown longer. That's clearly going to impact the ability to sell watches. And so you see that sales exports to the EU have fallen, have continued to stay stable, I would say. They're not terrible compared to where they were this time last year, but they certainly haven't grown the way that, say, the US has. Moving down from the EU, we still look at an interesting little quirk, which is the UK. They've had a massive fall compared to 2019 figures. I'm going to guess that they're, they're kind of having their China-Hong Kong moment, but in reverse. Because what is interesting is to look at what's happened to exports to Ireland, which have absolutely exploded since um, a, a, a baseline where they barely even registered in 2019. I think what you're seeing there is, as I said, kind of a reverse to the Hong Kong China thing, where a great chunk of sales that were probably previously being directed directly to the UK are now being redirected into um, Ireland. And what that, that could say some interesting things about how the Swiss think Ireland and it's having a land border with uh, the UK may play out as a shopping destination in a post-COVID world. Okay, stepping back and looking at exports to the regions at, at, a, at a higher level, uh, we can see that sales exports to Oceania, dominated mostly by Australia, are exploding. Asia is doing quite well. America is doing pretty well. Europe is kind of lagging, falling back a little bit. I think, though, it's important to note that those are percentages of those are percentage changes to a much larger industry and that if we do look at what's actually happened to the distribution of watches to those regions certainly between 2020 and 2021 there hasn't actually been much of a shift so whilst those variations of one industry, one of one region with itself look large it's not really changing the overall pattern of exports for the swiss at this point okay so let's wrap this up by looking at the breakdown of sales numbers values and technology mechanical versus electronic watches and Across the board, high level, what you can see are kind of the current trends continuing. The Swiss are selling slightly less watches, but they're selling them at slightly more value. And overall, the number, the value of those sales is increasing. If you dive into that a little bit more, uh, dividing it up between mechanical and electronic watches, you can see it's pretty much all good news for the mechanical guys. Compared to 2020, they're selling more watches and the watches that they're selling are worth more. The news is less obviously good for people selling electronic watches, as the headline figure is they're selling less electronic watches and the overall value of those electronic watches is falling. However, I must admit, I had a quick look and the numbers just didn't quite seem quite as dire as I thought. And so God forbid, I actually broke out my spreadsheet and started crunching those a little bit more to get a bit more understanding. So what I did was I sort of calculated the number of watches being sold, what their value was, divided the value by the numbers, and then came up with a average value per watch in 2021 and 2020 for mechanical and electronic watches. And what you can see is that between 2020 and 2021, the average value, export value, of a mechanical watch increased by around about 7.9%. However, during the same time, the average value of an electronic watch being sold increased by just under 16%, more than double what uh, was happening with the mechanical watches. Now, remember what we said way earlier about how the number of the, the sales and the values of plastic, cheap Swiss watches was plummeting? I think that's what we're seeing here right now. Yes, vast numbers of uh, Swiss cheap ass uh, swatches are not being made anymore and are therefore not being exported. And as a result, the overall value of that market is falling. 
but I do wonder if the value, the numbers and the values of higher end quartz watches, whether that's um, Breitling Endurance Pros, which are quite difficult to get hold of, or you know all of those quartz Cartiers that we see, or two thousand uh, dollar quartz tags. I wonder if they're actually doing okay, and that in the long run, as this really plays out, what we could actually see is quite a strong industry remaining in that space, and potentially even a place for growth for high-end, high-quality Swiss quartz watches. Very early to tell. The numbers don't necessarily tell us one thing or the other right now. It's just something I think we should watch in future. Okay, so that's really it. That's my take on what's going on with the Swiss watch industry. Still too early to make grand predictions about what the future holds. We still, as the Chinese would say, live in interesting times. But it's, uh, I think we can see light at the end of the tunnel. And everything seems to be going back towards a normal. And that's got to have a lot of people breathing a sigh of relief. There are some really interesting trends, micro trends, going on in materials and in particular technologies. Way too early to sort of put a stake in the ground and say we know how that's going to play out. But I do think there's some things that are worth paying attention to over the next few quarters. On that, I'm not going to do another one of these for at least another three months. I used to hit the FH numbers like every month, but really these days they don't change enough. So I'm going to drop back to quarterly and see how that goes. So you'll see something like this again uh, sometime around the probably August by the time the numbers come out. Anyway, I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches. Give me your ideas, your thoughts, your comments below. Uh, please subscribe if you can. That'd be great. And I'll see you later. Bye.